Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Chris Blair, who's the founder of Maestro Associates, which is a Denver flat fee financial planning firm. Chris, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Hey, so I want to get into what you do and how you do it and why you do it, but um, give us a little bit of background on yourself and what your entrepreneurial journey been um, like to this point in your career. Uh, born and raised on the West Coast, uh, went to college up in Washington, came to Colorado 32 years ago to go to grad school. Uh, I have uh, a law degree and an MBA. Basically, I figured out two or three weeks into law school that I was not like these people, so I better figure <laughs> a different path. And so I found uh, a dual degree program at University of Denver. And then after that, I um, was approached to... Um, work with a firm that essentially sold mutual funds and insurance. And I did that for nine painful months. And that was kind of my baptism by fire into financial advising. There were parts that I really enjoyed and there were parts that I didn't. And so what I did when I shifted over to do my own firm uh, is I focused on the things that I really enjoyed, the personal relationships, the one-on-one. Um, and I did my best in the other areas that I didn't enjoy as much, but I've been with it now for half my life, 27 years. Uh, and it's been an incredible journey. The, the company hasn't changed in terms of its uh, fundamental name uh, or fundamental approach, but we've done a bunch of different things. Uh, we've basically been growing every year in, in terms of our style and, and maybe making a few pivots, uh, especially the flat fee financial planning about 10 years ago. Yeah, no, that's a, a really neat buzzword. And I've been in the industry um, years ago through uh, mortgage banking back in the early 2000s. And I worked with a lot of advisors. And I know that there's um, really some misconceptions with, you know, flat fee and assets under management and commissions. And so let's talk through a little bit about what competitive advantage that gives you guys when you say flat fee. What does that entail for the client? So flat fee planning allows us to take a non-sales approach, take more of a counseling or consulting approach with the client uh, where we are focused on their well-being and solely on their well-being. Uh, and we are brought in not only to come up with the right plan, uh, but also then help them implement that plan and stick to that plan long term. So through flat fee planning, the client doesn't feel like, oh, we're being sold constantly or we're being yeah. positioned for that next sale or they're saying what we want to hear because they want to keep their assets under management. Yeah. Boy, yeah. you know, even though the portfolios are down 10% and the market's down 8% and, you know, you're doing terrible and you're totally off, we look great, don't we? You know, we're, we, we're doing fine. No, you're not doing fine. Something has to change here, but that's what you say when you're in, in assets under management. Uh, when you're commissioned, you don't have a lot of incentive to maintain a long-term relationship. On our perspective, we're looking at the, the big picture, whether it's the term comprehensive, holistic, integrated. We're looking at everything and how everything ties together. Um, we like to say when a dollar enters the family, it gets divided up many, many ways. It gets divided up into bills, uh, other expenses, but also savings, and then future and, and how do you integrate that properly so that you can sleep at night knowing that everything you're doing is working well and you have a team that's also uh, tracking it and watching and making sure that everything in your financial world is going well as well. And so go ahead. I was just going to say that that's so, uh, the way you explain that is such a refreshing like, oh, yeah, that makes sense, because I can almost envision um, being at the conference table going through this financial plan going, hey, here's what we feel and here's why we feel it. And you know that there's no ulterior motive like, oh, this is just the product of the day we've got to push. It's this here's why this is so vital to make these decisions and whoever you want to get to implement it, go ahead. But this is the plan. 
Yeah, and I think a lot of that just comes down to even my own personality. I'm more interested in the big picture. Uh, I'm more interested in how things work together, like putting together a puzzle uh, rather than doing a deep dive, geeking out on numbers in a portfolio or in an insurance policy. That I can do that, but very limited time. To me, I'm looking more at the big picture. Also, the behavioral side of it. What is causing clients to make decisions? Most of us, when we make decisions, especially in hindsight, we make decisions with, with less than ideal information. We are making it either focused on too short of a time frame uh, or our emotions are too high in the moment. Uh, I see that my, even myself, I have a financial planner and I call him when I want to do something and he talks me down. And I think we all tend to get a little bit emotionally involved in decision-making, and when you can run it by a team that knows you, knows you deeply, and knows your overall financial plan, they can guide you to make the best decisions possible. And I think in the long run, if you can make more and more and more better decisions, your chances of success skyrocket. Yeah. Uh, if you are, every time you achieve, uh, reach that fork in the road, you make the more emotional decision short term, you're probably not going to achieve your goals as well. Exactly. And, and it makes me think that in order to deliver that really unique, specific um, flat fee plan, you need to know a little bit more about the person or the you know couple than just fill out this intake form and call me later, right? Or fill out this online and, okay, here you yeah. go, cookie cutter template. Um, not that that's the way it always is, but I think that sometimes people feel like they're just another number. So what is it that you do that are maybe unique ways that you interact with the clients to make sure you've got enough in good information to give them that um, unique plan? Well, I think it starts off with really getting to know the client and who they are, how they make decisions, uh, how their experiences have been in the past. And I, I use the term values and goals. And I know a lot of other financial advisors have said, well, we talk about values and goals, but we are constantly going back and referring back to the values that the clients have and the goals that they're trying to achieve. And these don't always have to do with finances or numbers or money. It may be personal relationships. It may be experiences. It may be other things that have nothing to do with really with money directly, but we are tying always back to those values and goals. So our initial conversations with clients are just that. They're conversations. They are uh, us asking a lot of questions that have nothing to do with you know, where's your 401k at and, and what type of rate of return are you expecting? It has nothing to do with that. Because that, in the end, has uh, only a small part to play long-term in the client success. We want to know more who they are and how they want to best achieve their goals uh, that fits within their personality and their style and their risk tolerance and their fears. If we know that um, and we get to know them even more through further conversations in every meeting, that helps us guide them better. And I think yeah. that's very, very critical. One thing that people are very surprised about is we don't ask for numbers right off the bat. Huh. Come in, let's have a conversation. We'll share with you about our process, but then we want to learn more about you. We want to find out whether you're a good fit for what we do and whether we can help you. If we don't feel that there's a good fit, we're not even going to make that offer. We don't want to work with you if we see that that either you don't need our services or this is going to be challenging for you. So um, the numbers are only something we start to gather after we've decided that this is a good fit, a good personality fit between yep. the two parties. Neat. Yeah. yeah, I love I love that approach. It it really gets down to just um, relationship building, um, and if it is set with the right tone from day one, then that can be a long term profitable relationship on both sides because uh, that's yeah. you, you, you don't often hear that. Normally you hear, you know, let's go to this seminar and figure out how to close this uh, person into a new deal. And you're talking about, well, let's just get to know you. See if, if you like me, I like you and we'll see how it goes. And I think that's a really uh, neat approach. Um, do you find yourself working with specific types of clients? Like for instance, I've seen some people that say, you know, we only help optometrists with their financial portfolios and that's really narrow. Do you you work with specific markets or, or, or anything that way? 
We don't work with specific markets. Um, I think we, what we have found is that there is less a uh, a target market and more a a personality type that we think fits best with us. And and the word that we like to use is intentional. Yeah. The word intentional means that they're doing something on purpose. There's a purpose behind everything that they do, and they're serious about it. And you might be intentional in your workouts. You might be intentional in your work or in your hobbies. To us, those that are most successful with what we're looking for are are intentional on, are on achieving their goals. Mm-hmm. If they have that in the, that goal and it's it's uh, based on their values, they're more likely to achieve it rather than someone who tends to stick their head um, in the sand like an ostrich and just hope that things work out. We don't want to work with people who are relying on hope. We want people who want to rely on a a plan, a plan of action, uh, consistent follow-up to make sure that things are getting done and progress. They want to see Mm -hmm. progress. They're the kind of people who get up in the morning and go ahead. What you said made me think about a kind of a phrase that I've heard uh, over and over. Um, Are you interested or are you committed? You know, because people that are interested about achieving their goals, they're like, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, that's good. I went to that weekend seminar. Here's my goals. And then they do nothing with it. But if they're committed, you're intentional. What do I need to do to get there and tell me what's my next step and help Mm -hmm. me help me do it? Mm -hmm. That's what we like to hear from people. Um, we like to say that most of our clients are delegators. Uh, they can sometimes do it themselves, but they're too busy. They've got other things that are more important to them in the short term, family, work, travel, whatever it might be. Uh, they want to rely on us to help them get things done, to get their plan moving and continually showing progress. Yeah, exactly. So that word intentional is very, very important. Um, and it comes down really to motivation. And what we have found is that it doesn't matter how old they are. It doesn't matter what stage of life they're in, what generation that they're in. Uh, you know, we don't get into any of that. It really just comes down to that one uh, decision of purpose, of intention. And uh, to, to us, that is critical. Having said all of that, there are two areas that I think uh, have found us, if you will, um, in looking for flat fee planners, and I think this is because they may not be best served by traditional financial advisors, and one is real estate investors. Um, There's nothing worse to say to a real estate investor than, you should sell all of that and put it into stocks because that's how I make money. Right, right. Uh, They'll walk, they'll shut down and they'll walk out. So we have a lot of real estate investors who say, hey, I love the real estate side. I need to know how this ties in with my taxes, my insurances, my liabilities, um, my estate plan. How does this make my retirement work? And sometimes it's been interesting to have the conversation because they're missing maybe a couple of things conceptually. Like, you know, by the time you want to reach financial independence, most of these need to be paid off. Oh, yeah, I really hadn't thought about that. We need to have a plan to do that, don't we? Yeah. Um, another area is business owners. Business owners, a lot of business owners start that entrepreneurial journey with a purpose. And over time, they kind of forget that the, the business starts to own them, we like to say. <laughs> yeah. Then you become an employee they, of your own self. Correct. And are they... And there's nothing wrong with this. We all do it. I, I found myself in this role for a while, and I, I had to fight to, to realize, no, I own this. I control this. I, I'm the one that can set my own time. Um, and are they treating it as a job, or, or are they treating their company as an asset? One of the first questions we ask to our business owner clients is, what's your exit strategy? Have you thought about it? Not with the intention of starting it, but the intention of thinking of your business as an asset can you generate income long-term from it? Do you intend to simply sell it or do you intend uh, to generate an income stream and instead have others, whether they're family members or key employees, run the firm be, uh, long-term and you just generate income from it? Uh, and that's been an eye-opener for quite a few of our clients who never really thought about that. Uh, and then we can help them kind of generate that exit plan. 
Yeah. You know, it's, you were mentioning something just a minute ago that made me think of, you said uh, like estate planning attorneys. When you think about, you know, financial future planning, retirement, all of that, and, you, and you've touched on, you know, oh, um, stocks and bonds and mutual funds and insurances and all that. There's all these choices. Well, that's just in the bubble of your money. While your money mm-hmm. impacts many other things like you might need to bring in a tax professional to make sure one thing doesn't you know, impact negatively another, and then estate planning, and then maybe legal. Aren't there a whole lot of people, more, much more so if you kind of look at the 30,000 foot view, 60,000, 90,000 foot view for that matter, you need, you need some trusted advisors on your team because it's way more than just, oh, let's, let's put this in the right mutual fund or this right vehicle. Yeah, uh, if you're familiar with the term family office, a family mm-hmm. office is essentially um, an organization created by a wealthy family, um, and they bring in all of those dis- uh, different components to manage the family wealth. They'll bring in yeah. the tax professionals, the, the attorneys, uh, the investment professionals, the real estate professionals. They'll bring in quite a few different professionals just to work on, on the family. We took the, we, we thought about that approach and decided not to do the same thing. We didn't want to bring in an estate planning attorney and say, if you work with us, you have to work with our estate planning yeah. attorney. Or if you work with us, you have to work with our tax professional. We have, uh, a group in our um, or connected with our firm that we use as as uh, subject matter, I'll call them experts, um, professionals that we can go to to get guidance on how to uh, formulate an action item. But we always ask our clients who their professionals are, and we will get them involved as well. If they have a tax professional, they're going to be involved. If they have an estate planning attorney, that estate planning attorney is going to get involved. Um, so we play very well in the sandbox with other professionals in other areas. And if clients don't have them, then we can make some recommendations. But we are not experts at everything. And there are other people who are very good at looking at um, how how things work together. And they're the ones that we rely on just as much in putting our plans together for our clients. And I would, I would suspect that some financial planning firms might not play very nicely with having these other subject matter professionals, you know, quote unquote, poking their nose in on what we're talking about. But, but the fact that you guys are flat fee and you will, you're looking at the holistic approach to the client's success, hey, let's open book. Let's bring that accountant in and make sure that it, this fits in with your, you know, tax plan. Let's bring in or, or not necessarily bring in, but, you know, transparency. And I think that that, mm-hmm. that flat fee is a differentiator now in a couple different levels that people hadn't really thought of that benefits them. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that really comes down to the focus between strategy versus tactics. Yeah. Most financial professionals in all the different areas are tactical specialists. They know how to build a great estate plan and write the documents. They know how to put uh, a tax plan together and create the tax documents. If you will, those documents are their product. Uh, you've got the insurance professionals who know how to come up with the right insurance plan. You have the financial professionals who know how to put together a, a very good portfolio that fits in with what the client wants. And, and uh, they can also bring in some other products as the clients need. So there are so many advisors that are very good at the tactical level. The problem is they work in their own little silo. And if they all turn to the client and say, these are our recommendations and the client is being bombarded with these recommendations, the client is the one who is expected to be aware of the overlap, the the gaps, the problems uh, that all of these different recommendations cause. It's one of the first things we seek when we're reviewing uh, client documentation and, and kind of the current client scenario when they join us is what are the current conflicts that have been caused by so many different tactical advisors coming forward with Great advice, but advice that's not taking into account all of the other different pieces in the client's financial world. So we are focused more on the strategy of how all of these different pieces fit together. So guidance on 
estate planning and insurance. There can be conflicts there. There can be conflicts between the, the tax person that's trying to deliver the lowest cost and the lowest tax 1040 to the client versus the financial advisor who's trying to create the best retirement plan. There can be decisions made individually by those professionals that are actually against the client's best interest in the long run. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is get in there and find out what are those decisions and stop them from being made and get everybody on the same page. And I think that's the problem in our society in finance because too many, there are too many professionals relying on the client to have an awareness of these conflicts and the clients are the last people. They're not professionals in this area. Yep. But they're the most important piece of the puzzle because it's their money we're talking about. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yes. And so that's where that's where we become the most, I think, the most valuable member of the team solely because we know all of the different pieces and then can tie in, um, hey, this shouldn't happen over on this side because of the effect over here, or we need to get this changed because of what has happened over here. And yeah. we, then we go to the client and say, what do you want? what is the best outcome that you are seeking, then this is how it has to happen. And we can talk to the other professionals and make those changes. Yep. I love it. Well, Chris, let's, uh, let's wrap up with uh, what's, what's one final thought summarizing what's your competitive advantage and, and uh, what you would like to kind of leave the listeners with on and, uh, uh, when that perspective, then what's the best way that someone can reach out and connect with you? Well, the last thing I'd like to say is that I think if we look at all of the financial services industry, but especially the investment world, uh, we've been selling an idea to to the public that the most important thing that you can do to achieve financial independence is invest, 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 and get return, return, return. And you have to focus all of your energy on that one goal. And the truth is, We all want to have a balance. We want to have, and and we hear the term work-life balance, but it's just, it's an overall balance between all the different parts of our life. There's a book that has recently come out uh, called Die With Zero. And Mm -hmm. I had a chance to read it on an airplane flight that was not very long, so it's not a long read, (laughs) but it's really, really good. And why, the author's name is Bill Perkins. He's not some 80 year old sage looking down from the mountain like a guru. He's, he's only 50 years old, but he's kind of sharing a really unique idea. And that is, why are you spending all of your time and effort to save for something in the future that you don't even know that you'll get to that age, that you'll be able to do when you get to that age, what you've put down on your quote unquote bucket list. Mm that you won't have an illness, you won't have other things going on in your life. I think the idea here is that if you take more of a holistic approach, looking for experiences now and doing things now that can benefit yourself and your family with an eye to the future, but extending your work time, extending, extending that earning time, taking more time off, during those years. Uh, I'm doing this myself. My whole thought process has always been to work till age 75, but I'm taking sabbaticals. Uh, Twice a year, we've got a couple of months at a time where I might be able to take vacations, especially once my kids move out. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's going to be something that we focus on. Whereas instead of in the old days, my thought was let's retire at 65 and then I'll go and take on a different, you know, a different, uh, career or a different uh, set of hobbies. I'd rather spend my time now while I'm younger doing the things that I can do while I'm younger. Why have on your bucket list a bunch of things that you can't even physically do or you might not even be in good health? Yep. Uh, it it, it kind of it. makes you think about, um, I mean, it's just such a spectacular concept. Um, but, you know, you, you've heard the old saying, people on their deathbed never say, wow, I sure wish that I had spent more time in the office. No, people are saying, I wish I had done this or spent more time with family. So why not do it now? 
and have that balance. And, you know, Chris, here's here's a, th- uh, a question for you. Have you ever had like a eureka epiphany moment, like a thought like, oh, my word, this is the coolest thing ever? Well, those don't tend to happen when you're in the midst of a crazy work schedule. They tend to be when you're out hiking up in the mountains or canoeing or something relaxing because your mind is at ease to go, oh, here's a great thought. So why don't you plan for that and maximize that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have several stories that I could tell. I'll just tell one. Uh, A couple um, extended their time at work, but without taking those breaks with the intention that they were going to have five star vacations every year for the rest of their life. And unfortunately, they got one great five star experience in. They took Mm -hmm. a three week tour in Europe had a fantastic time, came back raving and said, Chris, we are going to do this again. And then we had the pandemic Mm -hmm. and they haven't been able to travel. Then he had a heart attack. She had open heart surgery. And the last meeting we had with them, uh, travel was off of the discussion. Mm. And I don't know if they're ever going to be well enough to be able to do those kinds of trips. Now they got one in. But what would have happened if they had, if he had retired five years sooner, taken five more trips before these health problems occurred? Uh, how much more yep. uh, fulfilling would that have been for them? And, um, and so these are the balances that we talk about. Yeah. So um, these are the discussions that we have with clients. What would happen if you could go on an extra trip every year? What if you could see your family an extra three or four weeks every year? How would that make you feel? Yep. It, it's it, those those numbers and you know it's like who's the old uh, the old saying from I I don't remember who but Rockefeller or somebody like that had more money than anything and they ended up being a hermit and someone was like you've got more money than you know what to do with how much more will it take to make you happy and he's like just a little bit more and that tends to be your people's um, mentality is get 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 and and fight and scratch and just get more and more. But in reality, what if you can spread it out and and contribute to causes and charities and nonprofits and give your time and all of that, because then that leads to that fulfilling life. And yeah, the the numbers on the spreadsheet, you know, that's important because you got to pay the bills. But what's your contribution? That's a that's a big thing that, you know, that people must, you know, in fact, you you hear about, you know, well, you go from striving to thriving, you know, those are stages of life. Well, why not, you know, kind of front load a little bit and do a little bit of thriving while you strive, you know, because, because I think what you've just described in that example in the book, it's like, you know, it's not like, okay, and three, two, one, I'm done striving. Now I'm going to go to thrive. It should be a mindset all the way through. And if you build it into your plan, we've got a lot of uh, younger uh, clients who they want to take those sabbaticals now. And that's exactly, yeah. I mean, w- w- I'm thrilled with this because we can build that into the plan. We can save for it. They can stay on track for their long-term goals, but they can be, they can plan and do the things they want to do now because that's their purpose. Yeah. Why wait to fulfill your purpose? Do it now. Love it. Well, Chris, let's uh, yeah. close with what's the best way people can reach out and connect with you and learn more. Well, there's two ways. Uh, the first way is, uh, simply to call our uh, our office, 303-316-7900, and just have a conversation if they're interested in learning more about uh, whether this might be a good fit for, this, uh, fit for them and whether uh, you know there's, this kind of approach is right for them. Uh, and then the other one is to go to our website. It's www.maestro-associates.com. And on there, there is a contact page, and and they can go through the material on the website and, again, see if this is a good fit for them. We are always open to uh, answering questions, Um, again, seeing if this might work, seeing if I don't want to bring on somebody uh, for whom uh, this is not going to be a good fit. That's, I think, why we like the flat fee model. Um, We don't work with hundreds of families. Uh, We might work with a total of 50 in the end. So. Love it. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you, Mike. Yes, it's been great. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.